Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome back to this updated Masterclass series. Today we are going to visit other planets, produce yellow science and transform this nice little starting base to something that will last us all the way to the end game. This episode is a little longer than usual, but here is a sneak preview of what you will end up with after these steps. I considered splitting this episode in two parts, but everything we will be doing today just fits together really well. The mid-game transition is also where I think most people make the most mistakes or at least make very inefficient decisions, so getting this right will be worth your time. Before we get into it, I want to thank everyone for leaving comments and liking the episodes of this series. It's been a major help in getting the algorithm to show it to new people as well. A special shout out is in order for Paolo Andrade, Glenn H, where's your planet? Over here. And Rob Miller, whose planet is hiding here in the back, for becoming members of the channel. Your support is very much appreciated. For the price of a small coffee, you now get early access to all my content. Okay, let's start with producing some setup for the yellow signs and we're going to make that nice and tidy just below the actual red signs production. You'll see why in a moment. And I'm going to aim for an exact amount of two yellow signs per second. Now, why two per second? Mostly because that turns out to be very nice in terms of rounded numbers of buildings that you need for that. And it's also a very nice amount to aim for. Again, I, I noted this in a couple of the comments in the previous few episodes, but you never really want to start making a new type of product with more than maybe two or three per second, sometimes even less than that. Mostly because you just, just want to get it going. And most of the time you don't actually have the raw resources to produce much more than that, or it will completely drain everything else that you're doing at that time. So just aiming at two per second. Now, in order to make yellow signs, of course, make sure you start resourcing in that direction as well. Also try to pick up anything that's related to the interstellar logistics system. So you want to pick that up after that, but focus on getting the actual yellow signs up and running first. Uh, what else do you want to focus on? The reinforced thrusters you might want to leave out until a little bit later, but don't wait too long because this will take quite a while to complete. This is one of the main bottlenecks in terms of the actual research. So make sure you pick up the more cheap things early that you're actually going to use. Then make sure you start working on this because this will take a long time, but make sure you get the actual yellow signs first. Uh, something else that you might want to focus on is getting things like the communication control. It's really cheap and it gives you some extra drones. Uh, of course, the mass construction in order to make use of blueprints and the drone engine to make all your drones a lot faster. At some point before you leave the planet, you're also going to need the drive engine, but this is really cheap to pick up so you can pretty much do this at the last moment. Okay, step one, you're going to need six smelters making graphite and then two smelters making diamond. And six is going to be the magic number for this entire build. And for those of you that did the math, you will notice we're actually producing more graphite than we just need for these two assemblers making diamonds. And that is because we want to use the graphite for something else as well. And as you can see, we also need some plastic. And in order to make plastic, we need graphite as well as oil. And that's where this belt comes in, because any of the graphite that's not being used by the diamonds is going to be used in the production of plastic over here. Now, on top of that, we're actually going to bring the oil from up here, down here, and we're also going to connect this outgoing oil facility to this. And the reason that we're doing this is if these storage units would ever get full, this whole facility backs up, so we will no longer be producing the hydrogen. And we, that's a problem because we need the hydrogen in order to make the red science. Now, we always want this to be producing. There's no such thing as having too much science. So by tying it to another science facility, which is also aiming to be always producing, this reduces the likelihood of us ever getting stockpiled uh, blocked on the oil. And in order to make that even easier, we're going to use that same oil to bring it all the way down here and produce some of these organic crystals. Now, again, in order to make organic crystals, we need oil, we need plastic, and it's an exact one to one ratio. So it's really easy to remember if you need six chemical plants making organic crystals, you're also going to need six of them making the plastic. Uh, we're also going to need some water and we're bringing in the water from over here, as you can see. All we need to do is just put down some foundation, something like this. If you build the foundations in a nice little tidy row, then you should get a nice flat shoreline, which will allow us to build some water pumps over here that I still have to handcraft, but that will only take a minute. 
Next on the list are titanium smelters because of course we're not going to be able to make titanium crystals without, well, titanium. So, um, we're currently not producing titanium on this planet. So if you want, you can just put in a box and dump any spare titanium that you might have in your inventory on in this box and then onto this floor. If you want to uh, grab yourself some titanium and you're in a desperate need for some and you don't have any on your pebble built on else's basis, what you can do is find one of these larger... Um, stones and typically these will also give you a, a small amount of titanium so as you can see I got 18 titanium just from that um, you're probably going to have some of these crystals in your battlefield analysis basis as well I'm still researching some upgrades in the meanwhile so make sure you always keep your science going um, and yeah that's one way of getting some crystal now if you're like me and you have a dump box somewhere in your base, like for example over here where I dumped all the resources I'm not really using at the moment, you can pick up your titanium at this point and put that in the box as well and put it to use. Now we're almost done, just add 6 more assemblers making titanium crystals, so 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, the only thing that we haven't built 6 of are the uh, smelters over here, the diamond smelters. And now we have everything going. So we have the organic crystals being outputted on this belt going in between here. And then we have the output, the titanium crystals, which need both the titanium as well as the organic crystals. And we have that on that belt here. Now make sure that you're always grabbing the titanium as far on the belt as possible. Because once again, we need to make sure that um, each of these assemblers can reach at least one of these smelters. So you need to make sure, for example, this first one gets it from the belt over here, because otherwise there's nothing to get. And then, last but not least, we have a total of 8 Matrix Labs making the Yellow Science. Now, as you can see, I'm still researching the Yellow Science, because I actually kind of forgot to prioritize this. But that won't matter, because for now the facility is not working anyway. But it is good to go for as soon as we get the automated titanium going. Now, of course, this outgoing belt is going to go all the way down here. There's a collecting box just in case we have to produce more yellow signs that we can uh, use up. And then it's going to go in between here into the actual processing facilities over here that we're doing uh, using to make our actual research. And we have all three science types combined in that single facility in the middle over there. As you can see, I hooked everything up. You only need a, a couple of these water pumps. I always built way too many, but that's just me. Um... And yeah, that's that's all there is to it. I really like this layout, by the way, where we have the coal coming in at the same place of the, for the coal for the uh, red signs. And the reason for that is this will make it a lot easier to automate this later on. Now, remember this little assembler that we made over here making some uh, missiles? As you can see, it made a lot of missiles by now. It just has just been plugging away for a very long time. That's a good thing as well, because as you can see, the waves are getting bigger and bigger. We're almost up to the limit of 180 units. And these larger waves might actually be able to take out a building or two every time they come in. And that's, of course, not something we necessarily want to happen. So let's put these missiles to use. Now, all you need to do in order to put these missiles to use is build like a, a, a dozen or so, maybe even less. I have 10 over here of these missile launchers and make sure they're powered up and connected to the belt. Now you want to have the outgoing belt on this side so that any um, overflow of missile production is still going to be stocked up because we are going to use those missiles in a couple of other places as well pretty soon. But for now, just keep stockpiling them. You might even want to add in a second box just to make sure that if the first box gets full, you will start adding something into the second box because there is no such thing as too many missiles. Now the nice thing about these missiles is that they will actually, even though they're in the back, of your base over here they will communicate with these signal towers and this is also one of the reasons you want the signal towers in front because anything that gets into the range of these signal towers will get obliterated by the missiles from over here not only do these missiles will fly all the way across the planet if they need to in order to do that they also do explosive damage so they're really good at taking out a larger group of enemies now this is usually the point where I rush to the other planet, get my titanium and then fly back and start to wonder why I didn't do some more prep work because I can't actually make the ILSs that I want to make. Now for those of you that aren't aware, ILS stands for Interplanetary Logistics Center. What's going on with my mouse? Um, over here, as you can see, Interstellar Logistics Station. 
short ILS. And in order to make that, we're actually going to need a fair amount of particle containers and we're actually also going to need some titanium alloy. Now, in order to make titanium alloy, we first need to research this. This needs 80 yellow signs, so it's not all, not all that much. Uh, but in order to make this, we're also going to need sulfuric acid, which you haven't needed for anything up to this point. So usually what it ends up to is me getting a lot of titanium, but not being able to do a lot with them. So in order to avoid that mistake, we're going to do some prep work. Okay, so step one, you're going to need to replicate the exact same facility that we just built over here for the uh, red science. And now we're going to have to feed in another belt of oil over here. This time around, we're actually not going to be using the uh, hydrogen, but we're going to use the oil. And specifically, we're going to use the oil in these six chemical plants making sulfuric acid. Now, as you can see, this not only requires oil, it actually also needs raw stone and water. Um, I'm actually thinking we bring that in from the back over here because honestly we have some stone down here which is already used up mostly but we do have more stone over here in the back we have plenty of water around so this should not be an issue. Um, we have an outgoing belt over here might as well store up any sulfuric acid that we produce while we are waiting for the actual titanium alloy to unlock. But other than that, make sure that you may, uh, never have the storage tank roll full of hydrogen because otherwise you have the reverse problem that we had in the red science facility. Because if this ever gets full, uh, the rest of the production facility will stop. So you will need to drain this off at some point. Luckily, the production of hydrogen is not that fast and there's plenty of places to use it. So it's not going to be too much of a problem keeping these empty. Next on the list is another number, magic number six. You can see a pattern going in six, 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 six. These are the six smelters that are actually going to produce the titanium alloy. So we need the sulfuric acid for that. But on top of that, we're actually going to need titanium, which brings us to another six smelters making simple iron, another six smelters making steel, and then a total of four smelters making titanium looping in over here down to the other build where we're going to be drawing in titanium, the steel and the acid in order to make the titanium alloy. That is once we research it. Now, although this facility is going to be producing two titanium alloy per second once it's up and running, I would actually recommend that you don't put any titanium in here just yet, but focus that on the yellow science production down here that I look, I activated it. So we can actually do something with that now. If, so if you get any titanium early on from your uh, Bellefield analysis bases or from your uh, random mining of stones, just put them into the science production. And now remember, we have one last ingredient missing and that is the particle container production. And I cleared out a nice little space up here that's right above where we're producing the, uh, the turbines and the processors over here. And this should be a perfect location to start focusing on building some particle containers. Particle containers are actually pretty straightforward to build because if you check out the recipe, let me show it to you over here. Where is it? We're going to need turbines, which we already have in production. We need some copper and we need some graphene. Now the graphene itself is always a little bit annoying because you need graphite as well as sulfuric acid. So it's a pain in the butt in order to produce that early on. Later on, as you can see, there's a secondary recipe using fire eyes, which is going to save us massive amounts of time. Uh, but for now, we're going to have to do it the hard way. So um, let's start with making some graphite. There's actually a Mark II belt coming in here, as you can see. And we should not connect this up to the uh, splitter. Uh, this is uh, going to supply these 12 2 times 6 graphite production facilities over here and combining those back into a single belt. I really like this type of a layout because it's a lot cleaner than having a very long belt of smelt so that you don't have to flick, flip back on itself. So just an alternative way of making a nice a compact production facility. Next up on the list are another six. Yes, the magic number six once again. Six uh, of these oil refineries making oil. And again, we're going to need a belt for the actual oil. And then we have a secondary belt siphoning off the hydrogen on the bottom over here. Next to that, we're going to make a tiny little facility making the actual sulfuric acid. This time around, we only need three of those because you actually don't need that much sulfuric acid in order to make this stuff. 
And of course, remember, you're also going to have to bring in the stone and the water from somewhere. Shouldn't be too much a problem if we have a lot of that stuff on this planet, but still, it is something to keep in mind. Now, we are bringing in the sulfuric acid down here into this storage tank over here so that we can use it in the next step. The next step being, you guessed it, a total number of six chemical facilities making the graphene. And I don't know if this is intentional by the developers, but the magic number six is used in so many places. It's in the Mark 1 belt, the Mark 2 belt is 2 times 6. Um, if you're not doing any of the math and you just keep the number six in mind, that actually will carry you pretty far into the game without having your ratios off too much. But um, anyway... As you can see, I have two separate facilities making the graphene because one of them are, is going to go in this belt over here. We're actually only going to utilize this bottom part for the moment, but it's always useful to have the secondary up here. And having the, all of this built is something you could do, but we actually need quite a bit of graphene later on. So you might as well put that to use for the moment. Okay, so now you might be wondering, that's great, now we have the graphene, but didn't we need copper and turbines as well? Yes, we do, and that's actually something we're going to be producing down here. I cleared out this nice little space over here, and what we can do now is actually copy the build that we have going over here for the uh, turbine production. Make sure you're not copying anything you don't want to, but make sure you ca capture all the important belts. Uh, copy paste and now we can set that down nicely aligned with everything that we already have over here and ta-da make sure you have some battlefield analysis bases helping you out with building this but this is the exact number of turbines that you need to start producing in order to make the actual particle containers However, remember we also need the actual copper for the particle containers and that is why you need to replace the four smelters that we had up here for the turbine production and replace them with six smelters making copper so you're producing just a tiny little uh, extra of copper and that will go on this belt over here so something i rarely do but i'm going to make an exception to the rule now is build something from north to south and that is going to be the particle container assembling machines over here you need a total of five of those so not six for a change um, and those fitly, fit nicely on the right hand side of the turbine build that we just placed down. And now what we can do is bring in the graphene from the build up top all the way down. Nicely aligned with the assembly machines over here. And then we can bring in the copper from over here. Uh, did I connect the wrong belt? Yes I did. Hold on. So like I was saying, bring in the copper from over here. And as you can see we have a nice little bit of overflow of copper going on over here. And bring that down to the uh, particle containers as well. And look, we are now producing particle containers. Nice and tidy with a nice little inflow. Now all of this work is just to get a production of one particle container per second going. And that might not seem like much. It isn't much. But if you leave this working for maybe a half an hour, you will have plenty of particle containers to make all the ILSs that you want. And you definitely do not want to scale this up any further. At the same time, you also do not want to start building this as soon as you want to start producing ILSs. Because you're going to need like 60 per ILS in order to make that. So if you're then producing it at a very slow rate, that's far from ideal. At this point, I can almost hear you screaming at me in the comments. TVA, enough with the prep work already, let's get going to some other planet and that's exactly what we're going to do now. However, picking your next planet is not entirely trivial, it depends a little bit on the system that you are in. Right now it seems that most of the Dark Hive is actually focused on this planet over here. So the lava planet, as you can see, it's uh, busy here. They having, they're having a party over here, so there's pretty much only one safe place to land on this planet making this not the ideal candidate to start out your first expansion into the uh, into the system on. Now we do have actually all the resources that we need on this planet, so I can see why the Dark Fork is um, leaning towards this planet, because it's, it's a pretty nice planet actually to build on. But let's check out the alternative that we have over here. So, uh, as you can see, we also have all the resources over here. We don't have that much silicon, we don't have that much copper, but for now this will do. We have plenty of those resources on our starting planet. Um, what is fairly typical is that you will not have any oceans on the other planet. So you will need the water and the oil from the planet that you start out on. Um, and you probably also won't find a lot of things like coal on those planets either. That, that, that differs a little bit between the different seats of course. 
uh, but in general you might be um, having to work around a little bit of that. Now the most important thing that you need on your second planet is titanium. Silicon you can make from stone if you really need to, so if there's no silicon over there and uh, no silicon in easy reach that's very inconvenient but it's not something that's completely impossible to deal with but you do need a steady inflow of titanium for a lot of reasons. So make sure you have titanium on the second planet that you visit. Um, apparently we also have fire ice on this planet which is uh, something that's not very typical and something that's also not very typical is that there doesn't seem to be any dark fog on this planet. Um, I do want to show you how to actually battle the dark fog and there's a good chance that maybe some dark fog will arrive in this planet while I'm preparing to set up because what we're going to do now is make ourselves a little battle station in order to conquer other planets. I like doing my design work in the sandbox mode just because it's a lot easier and quicker to do uh, but of course you can do it in your own game just in the live game as well. Now for the setup what we're looking for is a small or at least not not too large of a facility that we can initially set down on a planet that will be able to defend itself generate some power and basically fend off the waves of dark fog that will be coming for us as soon as we start producing any sort of production or at least consuming any sort of power on that planet. Now in order to do so you will see a very familiar setup over here with the battlefield analysis bases on the outside, a line of turrets on the inner side and then the rocket launcher on the uh, most inner side. Now. You might be wondering why are you using these basic turrets and not just things like implosion cannons and stuff like that and honestly you could use those as well. The problem is that you don't really need those. You do need some extra defense in order to make sure that your missile turrets don't get overwhelmed but honestly the missile turrets will be doing most of the heavy lifting so these are just there to pick off some of the stragglers. Now all you need to do is just copy the little starting facility that you had Make sure that you get all the turrets in there and then paste it. And then you can just copy and paste it around and make sure that you get a nice little circle like this with an open area in the middle. Now the inner part of this facility is going to be used for power production. You can do that in different ways, in whatever way you want. I like mixing up some uh, solar energy along with some wind turbines. But you could also use thermal power plants for example. Just make sure that you supply more than enough graphite or combustible units or whatever you use to actually generate that power and make sure you don't run out. The reason I like using some solar power and wind turbines is that this is infinite energy and you will be able to power these indefinitely. Now the problem with the solar and wind energy is that this is actually not a lot of energy to um, use in terms of the amount that you're going to need for your defense. So there is a solution to that. Remember these buildings, the accumulators that you might actually have never built as a building because you're mostly using these to transport power from one planet to the other. So you're using them as things that you put on belt, charge them up and then transport them and discharge them again. But you can actually build them as buildings as well. Now I have to admit I pretty much never did so before the last few updates but they have been buffed now. And they actually allow you to store a massive amount of energy and then discharge that and at a pretty high rate as well. So what this allows you to do is kind of cheat on power. You have these solar energies that will only produce um, solar panels, sorry, that only produce power during the day. And then you also have some wind powers that will also be producing the entire day, of course. And these turrets only need power when they're actually attacking something. So as long as you're not under constant attack, then these accumulators will actually be able to charge up whenever you're not under attack and then use all of that power to supply the power to these these defenses when you need it. Basically allowing you to work with a power supply that's a lot smaller than what you would typically need in order to power this full time. Now all I need to do is add in some belts and make sure the belts go all the way around so you have a nice little flowing stack of ammunition over here. I'm going to put one box over here for the missiles and then one box over here for the other ammunition. And we're pretty much good to go. Now in order to make this blueprint what I actually recommend that you do is um, make the blueprint first as the total factory or the total platform that you have over here. Then remove all the battlefield analysis bases and all the turrets uh, as well as the signal tower and then make another blueprint of just the belts and the power supply and you will see why in a moment. 
Now you might be wondering where am I going to get the silicon for all of those solar panels and you actually don't need that much. But you should have been producing the silicon over here for a pretty long time because again you don't need that much glass. And you're also producing the silicon over here as well and we automated that in the last episode. So what you can do now is actually remove these micro crystalline components for a moment. That means that this silicon that's being produced over here has nowhere to go other than this box. And then you can just pick up the silicon from this box and build yourself some of those solar panels. Of course, you can handcraft some of that as well. You will also have some silicon sitting there in your battlefield analysis bases from the dark park. But all in all, that should give you plenty of silicon to work with. So that means we're about ready to leave the planet. Make sure that you grab plenty of turrets, plenty of belts and plenty of ammunition. Other than that, you don't really need that much. Of course, you do need to bring some battle and analysis bases and at, at least one signal tower. You could probably build a couple of them on the way as well. As you can see, I'm having a couple in production still. What you also want to make sure that you bring is some more power production just in case. And I also recommend bringing some geothermals just in case you're going to destroy some dark fog. And of course, whenever you destroy one of their bases, you can place a geothermal power station on top of that to get a lot of free energy. When you arrive on the other planets, make sure that you start building the initial, just the belts and the power production first. And don't build the full blueprint just yet, because this will allow you to have everything in place before you actually start consuming any power. These accumulators will store up the power, but it doesn't actually count as consumption, so you should not be under attack from any waves on this planet. Now, checking this planet, <laughs> as you can see, we do actually have a base here now that popped up, the one I was preparing to leave to the other planet. I'm really happy that this popped up because I really did not want to go to the planet with 16 dark fog bases on top of it in order to show you how to do combat, because again, uh, Combat itself is not really a problem in this game, but initially taking on 16 bases at the same time is a little tedious in this stage of the game. It's actually not that hard later on, as I will show you in one of the next episodes, but for now, let's keep it simple. Once you have the entire um, thing built, uh, make sure you put the missiles as well as the ammunition on the belt as well. And this is where the extra power comes in, just because I know the enemy is going to come up from over here. I might as well put some of these wind turbines in the back to supply myself with some extra power. Now get yourself the second half of the blueprint. Make sure you flip it out uh, the correct way around like this. And it will not actually let you place it over it. It collides with other objects. Duh, there's a lot of belts in the way. However, if you align it perfectly with the already existing blueprint, what you can do is press shift enter and force place it on top of the one you already have. Now, because there's all kinds of power over here, if you manually build some of the battlefield analysis bases, this will super quickly build the entire thing and it will initially start consuming a lot of power as well. So you can see the threat ramping up here already. Especially if I add in one of the um, signal towers over here, which actually consumes quite a bit of power by itself. It will really jump up, but that's not a problem because we are ready to defend ourselves. We have all the ammunition in place, we have these uh, missile towers, and we have the signal tower to make sure we can take the fight to the enemy as well. In order to take the fight to the enemy, what you need to do is basically just process outwards with the signal towers. And I would recommend placing a battlefield analysis base right next to it. And as soon as you bring this into range of the enemy base, the missiles will start firing at it. This is a fairly low level base because it was just created, but the same principle applies no matter the level of the base. Just build your way slightly forward, and as soon as you take out all the enemy units, you can place a geothermal on top of it. The relay station will leave and fly back to the hive. You won't actually build a lot of threat with the hive. You could also destroy your relay, but that, that really pisses the dark fog off, so I would not recommend that early on. Just claim it for yourself and there we go, we have this uh, um, accumulating a huge amount of, uh, of energy over here and that will help us power whatever we want to do on this planet. Which for the moment is not much, just uh, put in some uh, basic mining on one of the titanium veins. I happen to have access to the silicon vein over here as well, it's the only one on the planet so I need to be a little bit careful about that. But 1.4 million is quite a bit of uh, silicon to go work with. And just put them into a box over here so you can easily collect this. Make sure you keep the boxes somewhere close to your defense facility because you might have the relay station returning at some point, setting up another base. So you want to make sure that you don't leave your planet defenseless. 
You want to head back to your starting planet again with as much titanium as you can. And there's a little trick because if your inventory is full, you want to bring even more titanium than you can fit in your inventory. You can control click the items in your depot and that will put them under your cursor. And basically just fly off using <laughs> the uh, thing that you have under your cursor. Fly all the way back to your starting planet and dump it in a box there. It's kind of cheating because this will allow you to pretty much carry about twice the normal inventory size with you. And you really need to be careful that you don't press the wrong button while you're doing this because otherwise you will be dumping all of this in space. But it's a nice little um, cheating trick you, should, you could call it in order to transport more titanium from one planet to the other. Now what you want to do is put about 1500 of the titanium into a box that is connected to your yellow signs and then put the remainder in the titanium alloy production up top because we're going to need a lot of that titanium alloy to get started. That 1500 titanium should be enough to research both the titanium alloy as well as the ILS and after you completed these two yellow science technologies if you have any of the red and blue science technologies left just continue researching that we don't worry too much about the actual yellow science just yet. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you repair your processor facility and put in those assemblers making the uh, components again because we are going to need all the processors that we can get at this point. At this point we're go finally going to start working on an actual mall and as some of you that are familiar with my previous work might already know, I really like using this type of mall where we're drawing in all the required resources with the logistic bots and then putting them into an assembler and then simply outputting them into another box with and again a logistics distributor on top of it so I can draw from that wherever I am on the planet. Now in order to make the PLS or the ILS we are going to need to make a PLS which requires titanium uh, processors and steel as you can see is, we have all of those things now on these belts and we're also going to need the particle containers in order to make the, the ILS and the PLS is going to be split here. There's a couple of them going to go into this box and the other half is going to go onwards into this assembler which will make the actual ILS as soon as we have access to that. Now, just let this work for a little while because we're going to hop back to the other planet and bring some more titanium to this one. In order to get the additional titanium that you need for the PLS, I actually decided to expand production in the alloy facility a little bit so we actually added in the remaining smelters that brings us up to a total of 12 smelters which is really convenient because that's exactly what we can use in a single mark 2 belt and that means we're producing way too much titanium over here so this box will stack up pretty fast so make sure you limit that and then the remainder will of course be used for the actual alloy production and you will need to transport the alloy uh, by hand to the actual PLS and ILS facilities. Obviously we don't want to be doing that by hand for too long but the reason I'm doing it by hand initially is to make sure I can spread them between the actual production of vessels which I have a nice little facility over here where we're producing the, um, the thrusters as well as the vessels. This is not a particularly fast production but this will do the trick. And we have the distributor and uh, logistic distributors on top of here as well. But initially these are not actually doing anything because I'm still manually transporting everything from A to B. That is to make sure we also have some of the alloy going in here because now we can actually start making the uh, ILS. So let me queue that up. And if you use, let the logistic distributors do their thing, you always get into a situation where they all fly off and supply it to, for example, the vessels, but you're not getting any ILSs or vice versa. And that's of course not ideal. Now, once you have your first ILS, make sure that you fly back to the second planet and grab yourself some vessels as well. And just replace that little mining facility over here with the PLS version of that. And of course you can draw in other resources as well, but initially all you need is the titanium and the silicon. You also need to keep an eye out on both planets in terms of uh, new relay stations landing there because that will make your life miserable if you let them develop too far. However, if you catch them early on, they will actually be beneficial because again, you can place some more geothermal power stations on top of there and that will just make sure you have all the power you're ever going to need on your planets. Then back on your starting planet, set down your second ILS and set it to request some titanium. And as you can see, we have it flying in now from the other planet. Initially, you might want to set the vessels on the supplying ILS only because as you can see, I have no vessels in here 
but I'm still getting it in here and that is because on the supplying plant I actually put that in some vessels there's plenty of power there so there's no reason to draw power from this planet in order to have my vessels fly back and forth and as you can see look Look, they're arriving and making sure I now have fully automated my alloy production, which I can then pick up and put to use to make some more vessels. So I can actually start transporting some more stuff in between planets, as well as make some more ILSs. Now, hopefully this is obvious, but the third ILS that you place down should be, again, requesting some titanium and be connected to your titanium crystal production, or I should be more specific, to your yellow science production, because that means that we now have completely automated blue, red, and yellow science, and we can pretty much complete about half or even two thirds of the entire technology tree. Now, I just want to point out that I, in the meanwhile, I have been building quite a few wind turbines in order to make sure I have plenty of power, because these ILSs will draw in quite a bit of juice if you don't or if you're not careful and if you draw too much then you won't be able to defend yourself against the dark fog anymore so be careful about that and also make sure of course that you start utilizing the ILSs wherever you get a new one in order to start automating everything else in your base specifically start out with requesting some of that silicon from the other planet as well so you can fully automate your processor production again because we're going to need a lot of those Specifically, we're going to use a lot of those into the production of both the um, distributors as well as the bots to actually do the transporting between our facilities. Now, this is the pivotal moment of your playthrough because we're going to go from autumn or handcrafting stuff and manually dragging stuff between facilities to completely automating everything on our starting planet and in fact everything in our entire system. However, while you're doing this, start researching towards the purple science already and everything you need leading up to that. Also, make sure you unlock the high strength glass, the Casimir crystal, the particle collider and the strange matter because all of those things are going to be needed in order to make the stuff that you're going to need for the purple science later on. Those are all things that you should be grabbing. You can pretty much ignore the bottom half of the combat tree. Um, most of this stuff isn't really necessary to defend yourself, so just pick up anything that seems useful over here. And of course, feel free to pick up some more upgrades in between as well. Uh, inventory capacity is always welcome, mechanical frame in order to move around faster. There's a lot of useful upgrades that you can pick up from this point where you're going to need some yellow signs in order to do so. Not in the least, the mass construction level 4 in order to unlock even larger blueprints. The first step towards that automation is putting a logistics distributor on every single one of these boxes that you have been putting up. Um, you're probably not going to have bots enough to supply all of these things just yet, but of course you will be mass producing these bots now from this point on. And as you can see, I have the first ones flying around already, just trying to uh, save myself as much manual labor as I can. Now initially the range of these bots is pretty small, so you might not actually be able to reach all of your production facilities from where you're building your mall. However, uh, just started working on some of the upgrades you should have, uh, I think up to level three now, and that should be enough to pretty much cover about half of the planet, which is about the size of our factory in total. Now, if you want to make your life a little easier when it comes to the Battle of the Analysis Base, what you can actually do is put a large depot on top of it and then put a logistics distributor on top of that. As you can see, becomes quite a bit of a building uh, but what this allows you to do is set a recipe in your logistics distributor for example for the plasma exciters that we're not actually making anywhere just yet so you do need them to actually make the distributors themselves so I am just handcrafting a couple of them they're pretty cheap to make so it doesn't take too long assuming you don't make everything from scratch but you actually pick up the base uh, base requirements for that um, but this will allow you to um, Take all the useful stuff out. You can always just switch it to something else, let's say, I don't know, processors or something like that. And then just copy paste that to all the other bases that we have over here. And then hopefully, yeah, as you can see, we have a couple of drones flying off because apparently there were some processors in there. And that allows us to actually make use of that without having to sift through the entire inventory. However, now we have the ILS in main production. Now the real fun starts because we're going to replace every single one of the incoming belts to the buildings that we've already built. 
and put an ILS in front of that and then have those ILSs request those resources and then output them on a belt like so. And you can see this looks a lot more tidy and organized and if you have some sort of mining operation very close by you can just uh, put that in here and then just have it export to wherever it needs to go. And of course, as long as you put some drones in here, the drones will carry it from one ILS to the other, as long as you set the local uh, demand and supply correctly. And this will make your entire base look a lot more tidy. But on top of that, it will actually allow you to um, replace some of those failing mining operations that you might have going on from the start. For example, all the way here in our starting base, as you can see, uh, the initial iron vein that we started to use is almost completely dry. The same holds for the copper vein that we initially started working out. You can see the belts are not entirely filled anymore. So by just removing this and replacing this with an ILS, not only do we clean things up and we remove a lot of these belts going all, all over the place, but we actually make sure that we have a setup that we don't need to replicate anywhere else. That is still f f working at full optimal uh, efficiency and that can draw resources from anywhere in the galaxy. Now when I say galaxy I currently only mean our starting planet and the second planet that we colonized uh, so you might as well make sure you make full use of all the resources we have on this planet and this is where the PLS that I siphoned off comes in because you can actually set up your mining operations now to feed into one of the PLS's and if you have any unused nodes nearby for example like the one I have over here what you can just do is place some miners, uh, miners, there we go. You can place uh, some miners over here as well. Just draw those in and then connect a belt to that and put that into that ILS. And then we have yet another resource available to us. Of course, you do need to make sure you set this to actually supply. You may need to put in some drones, so make sure you're producing some of those. It takes a little while for that to get going. But other than that, this is a very fast and efficient way to make sure you uh, are able to make use of all the resources you have on your entire planet. Now, I do have to warn you that this bot system is not completely ideal in the initial phase because sometimes it will draw uh, too much on particular resource. So, for example, over here with the processors, we're producing 1.5 per second, but I actually took off the logistics distributor because we have so many places where we're actually using these processors because we need them for drones we need them for the pls we need them for the actual vessels and we need them for the, the shuttles as well so that means that if i let the drones do their own thing they're probably only going to supply them to one of those sources and by making sure i take this out i do have to do it manually but i can make sure i spread them out exactly in the way that i need to prioritize at that specific point in time now we you can Put down the hat on top of here and again once you have everything kind of sorted out and then you can just let it do its thing just make sure that if you do that in your mall you set some limits because you don't want for example uh 100 pls's to be made because you're never going to need so many at the same time at least not in this stage of the game um so when you check these boxes you set the limits to something that's a little bit more reasonable so for example 150 vessels is probably going to be plenty at this point in time Similarly, one or two stacks of uh, ILSs as well. And as soon as you have the basics that you need, just have it auto produce. And then once you come back, you should find that a couple of these have completely filled up. Um, there is, of course, also going to be a limit set on the actual processors that it's going to request. And then everything else will kind of balance itself out in the meanwhile. Also, remember that we have a couple of these storage tanks that we were not using for anything and that we're kind of using to siphon off, for example, the hydrogen in our alloy build. As you can see, this is uh, starting to fill up quite nicely, but it's very easy now, easy now to siphon this off just by um, picking this belt, reversing the path, so this will actually drain these storage units. I prepared some more storage units on the other side, as you can see over here. So I can just put these in and then connect these to the ILS, which is also set to supply the hydrogen to wherever it needs to go. And that will help us making sure that we have the hydrogen actually flowing into our production facilities. And we can now draw on this wherever we need. And this should never stall again.
And there you have it, a very smooth transition to the mid game. We have ILSs in place in every single one of the builds that we already built. So we don't actually have to remove anything. Our initial kind of spaghetti-ish looks of the all the mining belts going everywhere have been completely removed. We're utilizing all the resources on our starting planet. At least we can now easily do so. I'm still in the process of making a couple of more of these PLS up and running. But all in all, it's looking very organized organized very tidy and more importantly it's also very efficient because we didn't have to replicate anything we didn't have to redo anything we're still on our starting planet we basically uh, only built a mining station <laughs> on the second planet and yet we are already well into the production of yellow signs as you can see so all in all i would say this is a pretty efficient way to approach the game and a very compact way of building your factory as well we have the first starting of an actual mall over here which we are going to expand on on the next episode because of course at this point in the game we're going to drastically scale things up and we do need that mall in place so don't worry it's coming um for now i hope you enjoyed this pretty long episode but i did feel like i said at the beginning that everything kind of um went together and i didn't want to split it up because it would make a very unnatural kind of uh, arc in this particular episode and all in all this should take you at least maybe two evenings maybe even three evenings to do all of this depending on your play speed and whether or not you're using my blueprints which of course are going to be uploaded to dysonsphereblueprints.com as well i hope you enjoyed this one if you're still here you are awesome and i do hope to catch you in the next one